give you praise. And we thank you for who you are and for what you've done and for what you're about to do, oh Father God. We acknowledge you in this place tonight. And I just thank you, Father God, for just having your way. Having your way within each and every individual that came into this place. Having your way with myself. And I thank you that not one person leaves the same in which they came tonight, Lord God. But that you would speak to their hearts, oh God. And I just thank you for divine change within each and every one of us. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. You guys may be seated. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God. So the title of my message tonight is, You Have Your Breakthrough. You have your breakthrough. You know, I hear a lot of people all the time saying that they need a breakthrough or, you know, they're believing for a breakthrough. But I believe you already have your breakthrough. And I'm going to show you in the word how you already have it. You know, everybody's up against challenges in life. We all go through things in situations day to day, you know, and God has already given us everything. And the premises of the message is the Lord is your breakthrough. Amen. He is our breakthrough. He is the one who goes before us and fights our battles. He's the one that provides for us. He is the one. So he is our breakthrough. You have your breakthrough. You have everything that you need already. Amen. And the first scripture that I'm going to get into tonight is 2 Samuel 5 and verse 17 through 20. I'm going to go ahead and read that. Well, I'll wait for it to, to come up here. That's um, 2 Samuel 5, 17 through 20. All right, it says, Now when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines went up to search for David. And David heard of it and went down to the stronghold. The Philistines also went and deployed themselves in the valley of Rephaim. So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up against the Philistines? So what did David do here? He inquired of the Lord. He went to the Lord. See, David was a man. He was anointed. He was mighty in battle. He was an awesome man. You know, he, defeated, he killed a lion and a bear. But we see something here. We see that he went to the Lord. You know, he knew where his breakthrough came, th came from. He didn't trust in his strength. He didn't trust in his wisdom or anything like that. It says here, the first thing that David did when he heard that the enemy was coming up against him, it says that he went to the Lord and he asked the Lord, shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? And the Lord said to David, go up for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into your hand. See, this is what God is saying. He said, without a doubt, I will deliver them into your hand. See, David knew that his breakthrough wasn't in the army that he had, wasn't in the strength or the past battles that he had. He knew that his breakthrough, he already had it, it was in the Lord. And whatever the Lord had told him that day, that's what David was going to do. Amen? If the Lord would have told him, no, do not go up, David would not have gone up. But the Lord assured him here. He said, I will doubtless deliver them into your hand. Amen? And I know a lot of us going through situations, we seek God. Amen? Or maybe sometimes we forget to seek God pertaining to situation. God says to pray for all things always concerning anything in your life. That means from the smallest to the greatest. Amen? From the littlest things. You can, you can pray to God about everything. He wants us to consult him in our daily life pertaining every situation. Amen. It might not be big as a going up against an army, but you might feel like you're going up against an army. You might be going against a spiritual battle in your life. Amen. You might go, be going through a physical battle in your life. But the Lord says here, doubtless, I will deliver the Philistines into, the, into your hand. Doubtless, the Lord will deliver you from your dilemma. Amen. Because the Lord is our victory the Lord has given us his word to stand on, stand on. Doubtless he will deliver us every time. And we have to know that. We have to know it doesn't matter what's coming up against us. We know who our deliverer is. Amen? Hallelujah. And it may look like that the odds are against you, but you have to know that you have the victory. It doesn't matter what it looks like in your life. All the time, the odds are going to look like they're against you. All the time. It's going to look like you're losing. It's going to look like there's no way to get out of it. 
But we serve an awesome God, a great God that wants to bring about a great victory and get glory in his name. Not us, not us to get the glory, but he's doing it for him. Amen. So he could get the glory so other people could see, other people can be drawn on to him. Amen. He wants to bring a great victory about in your life. He wants you to trust him and to lean on him. Amen. And some, and I believe the Lord was having me teach this tonight. I, I really believe and know that people are going through things right now. I know that people are, are needing a breakthrough and want a breakthrough in their life. And the Lord wants to let you know that you have your breakthrough already. He is your breakthrough. He says to trust and to stand in his word. The word of God says to stand. Amen. And when you've done all to stand, stand. Ephesians 6. See, when we stand, we have to stand firm. We can't stand just like this because if someone came up to me and I was standing like this and they pushed me, I would lose balance easily. I wouldn't be able to stand firm. But when you stand, the Bible says to be watchful. Amen. So when you stand and you're being watchful, you need to brace yourself. You need to stand in a posture and a position that something might come against you and push you. Amen. You have to constantly be ready because the word of God says that the lion, uh, the, the enemy uh, roams around like a roaring lion, says like a lion. Amen. He wants to make us think that we're going to lose the battle. He wants to try to scare you with his teeth and with his roar. But you have to know that there's more with you than there is with them. And let's look at that in the scripture of 2 Kings chapter 6. Verse 14, and I will read through 17 on that. And I'm just trying to encourage someone in here tonight to let you know that you have the victory through Christ Jesus. He has given us everything, amen, everything we need in life. He has already given it to us. Now it's up to us to apply these things to our life, amen, amen. to stand with unwavering faith, to believe, to trust, to know that he's with us. To know that he is the one who strengthens us, gives us wisdom and direction in every situation. Amen. But a lot of times we're believing for a breakthrough in our lives, but we're holding on to certain things. See, we're holding on to certain things that are hindering us from going to where God wants to bring us. See, we're holding on to these old things that are not good for us. God is saying, let go of these things. Let go of them. As soon as we let go of them, the, the Lord can begin to work these things out in our life. The Bible says to cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. You can't cast your cares upon the Lord and still hold on to that thing that keeps hindering you. You have to release it. You have to let it go. Amen? You can't expect to get delivered and set free from pornography if you're continually going on websites and going through pornography and looking at that. See, you can't be double-minded. You can't say, okay, Lord, I believe I'm going to be delivered from this pornography and go right back to it. Amen? And that goes with anything else in our life. You have to let it go. You just have to let it go. And let's read. I'm going to go ahead and read through from 14 through 16. And it says, therefore, and, and this, this begins when the Syrians, the Syrians were after Elijah. They continually tried to get Elijah, and I'm paraphrasing, and every time the Syrians would come and try to get Elijah, he would, he would know about him, he would go, and they couldn't get him. So, so the king of the Syrians were telling his men, he thought the men, his own men, were working against him. He said, which one of you are, are going and telling him? And his men says, no. He says, his God comes to him in his bedroom at night and tells him what's going on. See, even his own men in these prior verses before coming to this, knew that Elijah served an awesome God. Amen? And they're coming against him, and they found out where he was. So here in verse 14, it says, Therefore the king of Syria, he sent horses and chariots and a great army there. And they came by night and surrounded the city. So they came and surrounded the city where Elijah was. And when the servant of the man of God arose early, and went out, there was an army surrounding the city with horses and chariots, and his servant said to him, Alas, my master, what shall we do? See, his servant, he didn't know what to do. He woke up, he saw the enemy all about the camp. They were, there was horses, there was soldiers everywhere. They're ready to get raided. You know, they're ready to come in. They're right there. They're right in his face, see? 
It was already happening. There was no running. There was none of that. See, and a lot of times in our life, we're put up against situations that are going to come to us, and there's no running. The situation is right there in front of us, and what are we going to do? Amen? There's no running. There's no hiding. The situation is here. Amen? And that's when you have to know that God has given us his word, that we already have the victory. Amen? Let's see what happens next. It says, so he answered, do not fear. For those who are with us are more than those who are with them. And Elijah prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. Then the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw, and behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. They couldn't see it. They couldn't see the army of the Lord that was with Elijah. Amen? The army that was with Elijah was greater than the army that surrounded them. And you have to know that God's army is with you as well. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps about those who fear him and delivers him from all harm. And this is the same situation. Even back then, as the Lord was surrounding Elijah with these angels and these chariots of fire that he couldn't, the young man couldn't see, it's the same situation today in your life. Amen? I recall my daughter, she would go to Stockton to her mother's house every other weekend when she was young. And every weekend when they'd go, I'd send forth angels to be encamped about my daughters as they're at their mother's house to protect them. And one time when my young daughter, Abriana, she was young, she came home and she told me, she said, Dad, there was, I saw, looked out the window and went, out, went around and there was an angel outside with a sword. She said, a big angel. See, the Lord allowed her to see that. But she came back and brought that to me and I was rejoicing. You know, not that I didn't believe it, but I was like, yes, you know, they are there. You know, the Lord was showing me, hey, your prayers are effective, man. You're praying and you're not praying in vain because when you're sending forth these angels to go forth, I'm hearkening upon my word. He says, them angels are going forth and they're with your daughters. You don't need to worry about it. And the same thing goes for us. You don't have to worry about anything. When you travel to and fro, there's angels going back and forth. Guarding you, protecting you, keeping you from accidents and everything else that you never knew what could have happened. Amen? These are the, this is the kind of God that we serve. The same God that was with Elijah with the fire of chariots is the same God that's with you today protecting you in every situation. Amen? They're going, he's going to battle. He's going to war for you. Every day. Every day. We can't even see what's going on in the heaven, heavenlies. But sometimes he'll allow us to see it. Amen? This is an awesome thing, saints of God. If we can all get this and know that the host of heaven has our back. That the host of heaven goes everywhere we go. Amen? But we have to understand the authority that God has given us. We have to understand that we are children of God. We're not orphans. See, God has not left us alone. We aren't orphans. We're children of the Most High God, adopted into the inheritance of the saints. This is what the Word of God says, that we are adopted children. So God took us, when we were lost in the world, took us out of the world, saved us by the blood of the Lamb, and put us in His beloved family. Amen? Now we're heirs to the covenants and promises in which He's promised us to. We're no longer alienated from Christ. We're born again. Amen. Have the Holy Spirit of promise living within us, dwelling within us. Angels of the Lord encamped about us. You have your breakthrough. You have your victory. See, there, you don't have to worry no more and stand, when is my breakthrough coming? You need to stand up and say, I have my victory. I have my breakthrough. The Lord is my victory. The Lord is my breakthrough. Amen. The minute that you were born again, you were set free. You were set free the minute you were born again. But what has to come next? A renewed mind. If we do not renew our mind by the reading of the word, by the washing of the word, we are going to be helpless. If we do not know what the word of God says in our life, amen, how are we going to know what to throw at the devil? How are we going to know what to say 
when all these situations come against us, when trials and situations come against us, how are we going to know what to say if we don't know what God says about the situation? Amen? See, God has given us all the weapons, all the tools. It's as if he's already set a table before you with a sword and your choice of weapon, whatever you want to use, the Lord says, here it is. He said, I've already given it to you. You're born again. You're my child now. He says, now all you got to do is pick it up. You have to use it. You have to wield that thing. You have to pick up the sword. You have to swing it. Amen. Let the word of the Lord come forth from your mouth. Speak it. Live it. Amen? Amen? This is who we are. We're kingdom, we're kingdom children. And if we are kingdom children, we have to talk like kingdom children. We have to lead by example like kingdom children. Amen? There's responsibilities that come with this. And you will be judged. But the Apostle Paul said he counts it a very small thing to be judged by others. In fact, he said he didn't even judge himself. Because when you're a believer, there's going to be people talking about you. There's going to be people judging you. And I say it all the time. Why not let people talk about you and judge you for doing things righteous for God than going out there and doing things in the world that's wicked? And Because people are going to judge you. If you're out there doing bad, they're going to talk about you for doing bad. If you're out there doing good, they're going to talk about you for doing good. So why not stand up for righteousness sake? Amen? It's just like faith. What are you going to put your faith in? Because people who say they don't believe really have faith. They just have faith in the things they don't believe. That's why things are always happening. So why not put faith in what God says? See, you can either have faith in what God says, stand on that faith, and watch it all come to pass in your life, or you can stand in the faith that you don't call faith, which is negative, and watch everything bad come into your life. See, what you declare and what you say and what you live is what you're going to, be get, is what you're going to get fed with. Amen? If you're living by the word, if you're speaking the word, it's all going to come back to you. Amen? If we sow the word, we'll reap the word back into our life. It doesn't matter what it looks like in your life. Amen? That's all a test. It's never what it looks like. It's never what it looks like. You have the victory. You guys are more than conquerors. You guys are overcomers. You have your, vic your breakthrough. That's what it's about, is knowing who you are in Christ. God will bring you a victory in ways that you never expect. A lot of times we are looking for God to bring the victory in certain ways. We think we know how God is going to come through for us. See, we sit at home and we think about how God is going to deliver the money. We think about how God is going to set our children free. We think about how God is going to heal us. But God will do things differently. Ways that we never expected. He brought gold into a fish's mouth. Amen. He is a creative God. And every time the way, when I thought God was going to do it one way, he does it another way. Amen. And that's just how he is. And I, let's go to Isaiah 28, 21. I just want to share this scripture. Just relating to me saying God will bring you victory in ways that you never expect. You know, but either way, the victory, you have it. Okay? Don't say the victory is come and say I have the victory. Amen? Don't say my breakthrough is come and say I have my breakthrough. You have it. Amen? And this is the, con this is the way we need to speak. We have it. We already have it. See, I don't care how, how, how bad... The kids are cutting up. Amen. I already know and declare that my children shall ser serve the Lord. My children's children shall, shall serve the Lord. Amen. So it doesn't matter how it looks like. I don't care what it looks like. Because we don't live by our circumstances, by what we see. We live by the word of God. And what the word of God says. Amen. So it says, for the Lord will rise up as at Ma Mount Perizim. And Mount Perizim is the place that David named 
as the, the Lord broke through. The Lord broke through and burst through like water. When, when David prayed to the Lord in the first scripture that we read about him going up against the Philistines and the Lord told him, go, surely I'll bring about a great victory. That land was called Baal Perazim because he's the Lord of the breakthrough. He's the Lord that bursts through like a bag. When you have a bag full of water and that bag bursts and the water flows out, that's the breakthrough that he's talking about. A gushing water. See, th this is the breakthrough that God has for us. Amen. He says, out of our belly shall, shall flow rivers of living water, and out of the wells of salvation we shall draw joyfully. Amen. We are children of the Most High God. And it says, for the Lord will rise up as in Mount Perizim. He will be angry as in the Valley of Gibeon, that he may do his work, his awesome work, and bring to pass his act, his unusual act. Amen. So either way, he's awesome. Amen? He's always going to come through. No matter what, no matter what you're going through, you have your victory, you have your breakthrough, you have all of that. So many people all around, you hear people, you know, um, searching for so many things in life on your job. Even Christians, I hear certain Christians, many people are searching for peace. Amen? Love, acceptance. And a host of other things that will never be able to fill these voids. So they're searching for these things. They're searching for certain things to bring them joy. They're searching for certain things to bring them peace. They're ser searching for certain things to bring them hope. Amen. And this isn't just unbelievers. Believers are still searching for things. Believing that when I find my husband, when I find my wife, I'll be happy. Believing when I get that job and I'm financially stable, I'll be happy. You know? And a lot of times we think that our breakthrough is in our job. Just if we can get that job. If we get that raise. Amen? I'll be able to pay this bill. I'll be able to pay that bill. Some people think that their breakthrough is in relationships. That they'll feel complete. That they'll feel loved. But the Lord is all that we need. He is our breakthrough. He is everything. Everything in him consists that we need. Amen? So, so many people are searching for these things and going through all kinds of situations in their life and at the end they find out that it wasn't that marriage that they needed to fill that void. It wasn't that job that they needed to fill that void. Amen. It wasn't those drugs. It wasn't those women. It wasn't going out and, and having all the money that they needed to fill that void. Amen. Because I know before I got born again, I had these same voids, these, this same emptiness, constantly looking, constantly searching, constantly wanting something new. Amen. Constantly wanting to go do something new. But it wasn't until Christ came into my life, I realized that that void that I was always missing was Jesus. Amen? Because he's waiting. He's waiting to come inside of you. He's waiting to come inside of everybody who has not called upon the name of the Lord. If you're born again, you have his spirit. Amen? But there's people out there that don't. There's people out there that are still searching and still wondering and still trying to fill these voids with new age. You see new age everywhere. You know, talking about the earth, talking about the stars, worshiping rocks, and all this crazy stuff. See, the Bible talks about the people uh, uh, worshiping the creature rather than the creator. People would rather worship unknowingly the creation rather than the creator who created all these things. See, they're being sold short into worshiping what God created instead of the creator himself. Why would you not go to the creator himself who created these things? See, it's a trick of the enemy, blinding these people, making them believe that they can have peace in yoga, peace in astrology, peace in new age. See, it's a trick of the enemy. But God has their breakthrough too. And his name is Jesus. Amen? And you have Jesus. You're carriers of Jesus. 
So wherever you go, you're, you're to bring Jesus with you. Amen. Jesus goes where you go. That's why we're to be the light of the world. We're supposed to encourage and uplift and let people see Jesus shining through us onto others. Amen. Making them wonder what we have and that they want it. Amen. I know I remember I always seen Minister Val. I'm like, man, she is so joyous. There's just something about her. You know, it's the anointing. And that's what you want. You want people to be drawn to you. You want people, when you're in the grocery store, for people to come up and say, hey, do I know you from somewhere? You know, because that's the Lord. That's your opportunity to share Jesus with people. That's God opening these doors. Because we have our breakthrough, amen? But there's people out there that are still waiting for Christ. There's people out there that are hungry and just waiting for this opportunity for us to open our mouth and speak. Amen. To share this wonderful and awesome gift that we have with others that they may be set free and delivered. I want you to know that you have the power, amen, inside of you to bring the word of God, to set these people free. You have the power to speak life and to lay hands on these people that they may be delivered, amen, to speak a, a word of truth to them. All it took was my brother to bring me the word of God to my hands. I got the word of God in my hands at home, and that's all I needed. See, it was over. Once I got the word of God in my hand, it was over because I opened it and I began to read it and the word began to get in me. Now that you have the word inside of you, let it come out of you. Let it pour out onto those who need to hear the word, who need to be set free. Amen. You have the authority to do these things, and this is what God has called you into the earth to do, to take dominion, to take dominion over your jobs, take dominion over your homes, take dominion everywhere you go. Amen? That could just be declaring as you drive through your city, driving through your neighborhood. Amen? Declaring as, when you're on your job, speaking life over your coworkers, speaking life over your marriages. Amen? This is where it's at. This is where it's at. When we stop focusing on what we need and start focusing on God, amen, this is when everything begins to, to, to really show, begins to really lighten up in our lives. Because sometimes we're so focused on the things that we need that we lose track that you already have your breakthrough and that God has already provided these things. Matthew 6, says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. See, the world seeks after the things, what they should wear, what they should eat, you know, what they should drive, and everything else. The world is worried about these things, but we are not to be of the world. Our citizenship is in heaven, so the word of God says, why would we worry about the things that the world worries about when we know our Heavenly Father has already provided it. It's when we stop being kingdom-minded and we take our eyes off of Jesus and we take our eyes off the kingdom and we focus on the things that we need is when things begin to get difficult for us. See, God has already told us what to do, but it's a matter of staying focused. It's a matter of staying planted. It's a matter of staying faithful and dedicated to the Word of God. Trust me, I know. I know and I understand how hard it is when you have no money and you have to pay bills. I understand that. But I also understand the Word of God. I also understand how good our God is and how gracious our God is and what a promise keeper our God is. When we stand in faith, unwavering faith, believe in him. See, God wants us to be at a, in a situation that we have nothing else, nothing else to rely on but him. This is where he wants us. He wants us in a place of vulnerability. He wants us a place of total trust and total surrender that we have no other, no other thing to trust in but him. Sometimes he has to get us to these places. And I know when I got to this place, when I had nothing else but this trust in the word of God and the trust in God, is when God started manifesting. He said, now I can work. Now I can work, my son. Now I can work, my daughter. You're believing, you're trusting, you know. You're not wavering, you're not taking your eyes off of my word. All these things that are coming at you, see, th things are being thrown at you, thrown at you, thrown at you, thrown at you. But when you stay fixed, 
everything is going to pass you. Nothing's going to hit you. It's going to look like it's going to hit you. You might have to do one of these. But you have the victory. God is going before you. He's already defeated the enemy. And you have to know that. But we have to make sure that we're not tripping ourselves up with the things that we're doing. We need to be true to ourselves. We need to be true to the word of God. See, God needs so much more out of us than Sunday and Wednesday. He needs our heart. He needs our dedication. Amen. He needs our faithfulness. And that's what counts. See, it, it doesn't matter about going to church on Wednesday and Sunday. Yes, it's good. Yes, we must fellowship with each other. But the real test is when you're at home. Amen. When you, when you have no one to call, when you're at home and you're going through these challenges and these situations. See, pastors taught us how to pray. Pastors taught us how to stand. Amen? And I promise you, if you use these tools, if you use the weapons in which we have been given, I'm telling you that God is going to bring a victory in your life every time. There's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can hinder you. Amen? You have the victory. God has already caused us to triumph over all things. He is an awesome God. You have to know that the Lord is our breakthrough. And without Christ, we have no hope. The Lord is our breakthrough. And without Christ, we have no hope. Let's look at Ephesians 2.13. 12, I'm sorry, 2.12 through 13. And there's so many people going about every day who have no hope just as we were before we came to Christ. And it says that at that time, you were without Christ, being alien, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen? Amen. And when I read that, it says they were aliens. They were separated. They were separated and alienated in the way they think, in the way they act. We were alienated from God in our actions, in what we did. We didn't act like Christians. We didn't do what Christians do. Amen? But once the blood of Christ had cleansed us and we had been brought, been brought near by the blood of Christ... Something changed within us. Amen? We became, we, we, we became partakers of the covenants and promises. And now we went from having no hope into hope. We see here at the beginning of, the, of verse 12, it says that at this time you are without Christ. Amen? It says we are without Christ. And if we continue reading, it says, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants and promises, having no hope and without God. We can see here in this scripture that without Christ, there is no hope. When we were lost, we had no hope. But we were brought near by the blood of Christ. Amen? That's something to rejoice about. That's something to shout about. Because we never thought that maybe we'd be in church today. A lot of us thought we might be dead, still in the club, still drinking, still smoking weed, doing all, but we've been brought near by the blood of Christ, no longer hopeless, but now we have hope within us, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is our joy. See, it's all about him. Everything is about Jesus, because without him, we wouldn't have anything that we have now. You know, my son shared on the Thanksgiving service, he came up here, and it just touched me, him sharing about how Jesus saved me, and he said that he wouldn't be here today, we wouldn't be here today, and this and that. And he, to me, he saw that we would have no hope. There would be no hope. If Jesus had not come into my life, my family would have no hope without Christ. That's our number one goal is to bring people hope through the word. That doesn't mean you got to be fake and smile all the time. 
No, it means that you stand and you share the word with people. You don't join in on the pity parties. You give them the word. You be straight. They might not want to hear it, but they're going to thank you later. Amen? Being real is praying for people, loving people. Amen? Because a lot of people will give you fake love. They'll tell you they're praying for you. They'll smile. They'll give you hugs. Say, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. And they jump in their car, turn on their music, and forget about you as soon as they hit the gas. But true love, the love of Christ, inside of us. What's the word I'm looking for? It force, doesn't force us, but we, we want to do nothing else but to pray for people who need it. Those who are sick, those who are going through things. It compels us. The love of Christ compels us to do these things. Amen for others. To be selfless. That's, that's what we're to do. To uplift and encourage each other in every situation. And this is, this is the awesome thing. So we see that we were without hope, but now we have hope. And as soon as you received Christ, you had your victory. You had your breakthrough. Second Peter 1, 3. Everything, so now that we have been brought near by the blood, everything we can ever need is found in Christ. So now that you've been bought, now that you've been brought near, we've received Christ, right? Christ is our gift. He's our bride. So in him, everything that you will ever need consists in him. Everything. It's that simple. We don't need to go look no more for, for the good job. I mean, the good job will come when you look for Christ. We don't got to go and look for that good spouse no more because when you're doing kingdom work and you're spending time looking for Christ, that spouse will come. See, once we know that everything consists in Christ and we spend our time in the word and with fellowship with Christ, everything will come. Everything, you'll be like a magnet. Favor, blessing, everything. Anointing. In his presence, there is fullness of joy. In Christ is everything you will ever need. He supplies all of your needs. Everything you'll ever need is in Christ. Second Peter 1.3. And it says, and his divine power has given to us all things. Did it say some things? It says all things that pertain to life and godliness and through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. Amen. So he has already given us all things that pertain to life. Amen. And godliness. It's not just life, but it's also being accountable for the way we live as we call ourselves Christians. Praise God. Colossians 1.17. So I'll go ahead and read Colossians. And it says, And he is before all things, and in him all things consist. So this is the scripture that I was saying. Everything you need is in him. It says, And he is before all things, right? He's before our marriage. He's before our job. He's before our sporting events. He's before what we want to do. It says he's before all things. And then it says, and in him all things consist. When we put him before all things, everything that we need, we have. Because in him all things consist. Everything. Everything. Jesus is the word, right? So we, it's saying in all things. In, in him, all things consist. In his word, all things consist. Whatever you're dealing with, you can go and open up his word and all things consist. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're dealing with, you can flip to that scripture. Look, at you need healing, flip to that healing scripture. All things consist. When you need money, go through the scripture. All things consist. See, God doesn't just care about our salvation. salvation. He cares about everything. See, it doesn't say some things consist. He doesn't say, I just care about your salvation, but I want you poor here. 
I just care about your salvation. I want you sick here. No, he says all things consist in him. That means healing, deliverance, peace, joy, love. Amen? Everything. You don't need to search for these things no more in other places. It's in him, in his word. Everything consists that you'll ever need. Everything. In his word. Christ is the word. Amen? It's awesome. So we see, I'm a, we know that all things in him consist. So we'll look at a couple things before I fi finish up tonight. And freedom is in him. We can see that in John 8, 36. There's freedom. If you're not feeling free, you have to know that you've already been set free. It says, therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. You are free. It's not questionable. You might feel like you're bound, but no, you, you declare you are free. He has already made you free. In Christ, you have peace. Ephesians 2.14. In him all things consist. See, we're going through scriptures in the word. And in the word, all of these consist. For he himself is our peace. So who's our peace? He is, because in him all things consist. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation? In him we have life, John 10.10. 10. It says, for the thief does not come except to steal, kill, and destroy. And this is, it says, I have come. Jesus says, I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. So he's not just talking about life. He's talking about abundant life. Every area of life. This is what he's come for. Joy, peace, amen, freedom. We are free. If that's something to shout about, we're free to love, we're free to give, we're free to be us. We're no longer ha held by chains and constraints to be someone that we're not. In the world, a lot of people tried to act like someone they weren't. They always had to put on a show. Amen? Act one way, go home and act another way. But God, Christ said, he has made us free. We are free to be ourselves. We can love. We don't have to worry about what people think about us no more. To me, this is an awesome thing because when I became born again, I was able to be free. I was able to be me. I was able to joke and laugh and be myself and not worry about what anybody thinks. Amen? And this is how Christ wants us. Amen? As children, children before him, standing in faith with freedom and peace and life, abundant life. This is the life that he's given you. And you have to know you have your victory already. And we'll end with 1 Corinthians 15, 57. And it says, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. I want to tell you that you have the victory because you have Christ. Amen. And in Christ, all things consist. Get into the word. Open it up. See what God says about you. Declare your outcome and not your situation. Let's give God praise.